made it this far, yeah, we're almost done here, aren't we? We're talking about slope and deflection. The last uh, video, we had a really hard slope and deflection problem. This time, we look at one, we're thinking, oh, this is just as hard as the last one. Let's see if we can do it one more time. Let's see if we can do it a little bit faster than we did last time. There was a lot of explaining last time. Maybe this time we can just go, okay? So what are the slope and deflection equations for that beam? All right, let's see if we can do this. Now, what I've done here is I've written you a recipe. We, got this, we derived this in the last video, didn't we? Find global equilibrium. We'll do that first. Identify your boundary conditions. Cut the beam in different sections to write the moment function for each one of those sections. Then integrate the moment function one time for slope, two times for deflection. And then finally, use your boundary conditions that we found way back up here to plug back in and find those constants of integration, okay? So I think we can do this, okay? First off, let's do a little bit of statics, which we are like excellent at, okay? Here we go. What are, uh, what's our global reactions here, okay? Well, we know that this is a fixed connection. And so we have we have an AX, an AY, and a bending moment there, or a resistive moment at the wall. Now, AX is going to be zero, okay? And we know that this guy here, we can turn that into a concentrated load. Six times eight is 48 kilonewtons, right? And so that makes AY, right? Some of the force in the Y, that makes AY 48 kilonewtons. And then what is M? That's not too hard either, is it? Take the sum of the moments, we'll call it for W at the wall, okay? And what do we get? We get M, which I drew as positive, okay? And then what? That rotates me, what? Negative minus six, no, six? Where did you get that? Minus 48 times how far away? Well, that'd be six plus half of six, which is three. That's nine, isn't it? Okay. So M is equal to, let's see if I can get this, uh, 48 times nine. So 432, and that's going to be what? Kilonewton meters, okay? So M here is 432 kilonewton meters. So there's our global equilibrium, okay? That's not too hard. Okay, you got it? Now let's do number two now, which says identify boundary conditions. Now I wanna think about this right quick. As this thing bends, what happens? The wall, remember the, the wall is going to be pretty straight coming off that wall, and then it's going to slowly dip down here, okay? So there's some deflection at the end of the beam. There's a deflection here in the middle, right? So what can we say about the boundary condition? These are kind of our logic conditions, okay? <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is, well, let's look at the boundary condition. The first one I'm going to do is this. I'm going to have two sections of the beam, section one, section two, okay? And actually, it might be just a tiny bit easier if we skip to number three and cut and write those moment functions and then come back and look at those boundary conditions because I think they'll make more sense to you. So let, if you let me do that, I'm going to go ahead and cut the beam and write a moment equation. So first, I'm going to cut through here, right? And I'm going to write an equation. So... Again, if we look at this guy, here's what we have. What happens when you cut the beam? You must have an M and V. There's your N, there's your V, and there's your M, okay? And then we cut it at a distance of, I'm going to call it X1, okay? And X1 is the X value here in section 1. I'm going to have an X2 here in a minute that's going to be the X value in this section over here, okay? Now, what I'm interested in, right, is writing the equation for the moment function for section one, okay? So the moment function for section one equals what? How do we do that, okay? 
Well, let's put on our, uh, our global reactions here also. So we have this, 48 kilonewtons, and we got this, 432 kilonewton meters, okay? So if we take the sum of the moment at, I'm gonna go at the, no, I'm gonna go at the cut this time, okay? So I'll take the sum of the moments, at, I'm gonna call it C for cut, right? I'm taking the moment over here, what do I get? The N and the V knocked out. Don't need them anyway. All I really need is that M. So I get a positive M because he's counterclockwise. I get the 432, which is positive. 432. And I get what? What else do I get? Well, I get this 48, but it rotates me negative. So minus 48 times how far away? X1. That's how far away. So M, right, M for section one, I'm just gonna move this guy to the other side, right, I'll move those two to the other side, is equal to 48X1 minus 432, okay? That's not too bad, is it? We just cut the beam in half and wrote a moment equation, okay? Let's do for section two. Now I'm gonna cut it here. Where did I cut it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work it from this side over here, okay, which is a little bit more confusing. You can work it from this side, and if you do that, if you work it from this side, you, uh, you don't need another X. It's the same X, but since I'm coming from the other side, right, I mean, X1 came from, is here, right, here's X1, and X2 is coming from this side over here, so let's see if we can do that. Here, what do we got? There's the beam, there's this load, okay? And this is the distance x2, and then what happened over here? There's your m, there's your v, and there's your m, and that's it, right? Now, how big is that load? Well, the load is eight kilonewtons per meter, but how many meters of it do I have? x2, okay? So this is, 8 times x2. Okay, that's how big that is. All right. And so, what does the moment look like there? So, again, I'm going to take the moment at the cut. Okay. Sum in the moments at the cut. What do I get over here? What do I get? I get m, which is going negative. So, minus m. Okay. And then I get this guy, which is also negative, minus 8x2 uh, times how far away? Well, times x2 divided by 2. That's how far away. Okay. So m, this was m1, right? So m2 is equal to, that's this guy, is equal to minus uh, 4 x2 squared, isn't it? 8 divided by 2 is 4, isn't it? Okay. So there is the equation for m2. Okay. Do you see where those come from? That's not too bad, is it? Let me erase. I'm going to erase these equations here. And I'm going to just move this up so I have some room here. Okay. So I got m1 and I got m2. Negative 4x2 squared, okay? Now, let's talk about those boundary conditions now, okay? So over here on this beam, now remember what happens at the wall when it's a fixed support, okay? When, I always like to write when, right? When x1 equals 0, then what do we know? Well, here's what we know. When x1 equals 0, the deflection at the wall is how much? y1 equals to 0. You know what? When x1 equals 0, guess what else? The slope at the wall, right at the wall, is perfectly flat. And so theta 1 equals 0, okay? That's two boundary conditions right there. Now, I'm going to need a couple more. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over, what you want to do is always look at that boundary condition right at the interface between section one and section two. What do we know about that boundary condition? Okay. When X one, you know what, or X two equals six, then what do I know? Right. If I go six this way or six that way, what do I know? I know that, that y1 is equal to y2. I know that the deflection, right, at that point, one molecule on that side is the same as one molecule on that side, right? They're equal to each other. And then what do I know about the slopes? Now, this part's a little bit confusing. I know that the slope, right, here's the slope right here. Whoop, kind of a line at that point, right? Theta 1 is equal to... Now, you might be encouraged to just say it's equal to uh, theta 2, but you would get it slightly wrong because we're coming from this side. So when I come from this side, think about x being negative. When x is negative, that's going to flip the sign of my slope on that side over there, right? It's like mx plus b, right? But if x is negative, then that makes that slope negative, okay? So what you have to do is you have to say negative. So theta 1 is equal to negative theta 2, okay? I hope you understand that part. And it's just because I cut it and I did that side of the beam and I'm coming from this direction over here. That's the only reason. If I were to come from this side on both diagrams, both free bodies, then it would have been theta 1 equals theta 2. But since I came from the other side, I got to do it that way, okay? Keep from messing it up. So what do we got? We got four boundary conditions. One, two, three, four, okay? We're gonna use that and see if we can't write these equations, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this guy. We're gonna start with this, and we're gonna try to do the next thing, and that is this. Integrate mx, the moment function, two times to get the slope and deflection equations. For section, we'll do section one, and then we'll do section two, okay? So this is just for section one, so it's going to be using that guy, okay? And what do we know about that? Here's what we know. d squared y over dx squared is equal to the moment function times, or divided by rather, e times i, okay? That's what we know. So if we take the derivative of this one time, right, we get what? Well, we get d uh, we get dy dx, but well, the derivative of the moment function we said was what? It's the slope function, isn't it? So that's actually going to be this. Let's move the ei over to the other side. Okay, equals the integral of the moment function. And then if we integrate that one more time, we get what? y times ei, right, equals integral, integral, that moment function, okay? Two times, okay? So that's what we're doing. We're gonna integrate, th integrate this equation to get this, and then integrate it one more time and get that, okay? So can we do that right here? Can we get the integral of that function right here? Let's do that, let's, let's erase this and put him right there, okay? So what's the integral of this guy? What's the integral of that? Well, come on, y'all know. It's gonna be 48 x1 squared over 2, right, minus 432x1, and then don't forget those constants of integration. So we're going to just do this, plus c1, okay? Now let's do this. Let's integrate it again. We're going to integrate, double integrate that function, or we can just integrate one time this function, because it's already been integrated once, hasn't it? Okay? So what is that going to be? Integrate that for me. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. Huh. How about 24x1 cubed divided by 3 minus 432x1 squared over 2 plus he's going to get what? C1 times x plus 
my second constant of integration, C2, okay? Oh, that was a lot. Okay, fine. Let's see if we can do it now for exact same thing, except I want to do it for moment two, for section two, okay? So in section two, I get theta times EI, okay, is equal to, we're going to integrate this guy. What do we get? Minus 4 x cubed over 3, right? Because he was squared, now he's cubed, okay? Plus what? Constant of integration, which is, now we already got C1, we already got C2, so guess what? This needs to be C3, okay? And then finally, y times EI is equal to, okay, integrate it one more time, and what do we get? We get minus 4x to the fourth divided by over 4, so that turns into a 12, doesn't it? plus C3 times X2 plus C4. Okay, so there's where our money is, right there. There's our four equations, right? And that's the whole thing we're after. We're all done. Well, we're done all the way down to step four, okay? We're done down to here. We haven't really done step five which is the final piece of the puzzle, okay? So these are the equations. Um, this is the slope, this is the deflection, this is the slope, this is the deflection. This is for section two, and this over here was for section one, okay? So now the next step is we want to use this, our boundary conditions, to substitute into there to find those constants, okay? And basically, so we can, we can finally write the equations of slope and deflection for each section. So we're after four equations, two for each, in the cleanest form we can with no constants in there, okay? Well, at least no unknown constants, let's say. So let's take this first guy right here, okay? So what we want to say is, do we, what do we know about this? Well, here is, here's theta 1. This is theta 1, by the way. This is y1. This is y2. This is theta 2. But theta 1, when theta 1 equals 0, then x1 equals 0. So we're saying, hey, put a 0 in there, put a 0 in there, and put a 0 in there, and calculate c1. Well, fine. Um, c1 has to equal 0. Right? Because this times zero is zero, that's zero, that's zero, then that makes C1 equal to zero. Let's do the same thing in the second equation. What do we get? X1 equals zero and when Y1 equals zero. So if this guy is zero, then that guy is zero, and that guy is zero, and that guy is zero. So guess what? C2 equals to zero. I thought you said this was going to be hard. Now, it's not too bad, right? Okay. So finally, what for this guy here, what we got is theta 1 uh, times EI. Now, what does the EI do for us? Do you remember? Remember, E is the modulasticity, and I is the geometric property of the cross-section. And so this thing right here in the parentheses kind of tells us both the, by, the, by the material and the construction of the beam how bendy it is, right? This tells us the bendiness of the, of the, the beam, okay? So EI is equal to, um, can we clean that up? 48 divided by 2, 24x1 squared minus, bam, 432x1, right? Plus zero. Okay, good. Y1 is equal to, ba bam, 24 divided by 3 is uh, da, 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 8. 
8x1 cubed minus 432 divided by 2 is uh, 216, isn't it? 216x1 squared plus, oh, plus C1x, that's 0, and plus C2, that's 0. So that's it right there, okay? Those are the slope and deflection equations for section one. So you give me a number between zero and six, and I'll tell you what the slope is gonna be and what the deflection is, okay? Now let's see if we can get the answer if I tell you between there, between the end of the beam and, and six, okay? Okay, let's go. So we got this guy here. Now let's, uh, let me make a little bit of room here, okay? I'm gonna erase this so I have some, some dancing room here. Did I do that right? I think I did that right. Okay. All right. So let's do this guy right here. What do we know, okay? Well, here's what we know. When x2 or x1 equals six, y1 equals y2, but we also know theta1 equals theta2. So let's take that guy, okay? And let's just write it this way. This guy is negative 4. Now what am I going to put in for x? I'm going to put in 6, right? Divided by 3 plus c3, okay? That's theta2. Now don't forget about the ei. Now I'm going to set it equal to this guy, theta1. Now, he's got an EI also, doesn't he? The EIs will just cancel out. So, it's just going to be equal to that over there, which is going to be equal to, um, it's going to be equal to this, okay, 24 x1 squared minus 432 x1. Now, x1, of course, has got to be 6, doesn't it? Okay, so that's got to be a 6. And, uh-uh-uh, uh-uh-uh, one of them has to be equal to, this is slope one, slope two, or slope one, slope two, but one of them has to be equal to the negative of the other, right? So I'm gonna put a negative right there, okay? Now what does that negative do for me? Let's distribute it, shall we? So he becomes negative, that one becomes positive, okay? And so let's see what we get here on Wake up, calculator. Okay. So this over here is positive 288. I'll add that to this side over here. Okay. Subtract that from it, and you'll get C3 equals 2016. 2016. Make a wish. Make a list. Check it twice. If you want to find out who's Y squared over Y2, okay? So this guy right here, here's section one, here's section two, okay? Here's section two, so I'll start off with theta. Two times EI is equal to, I got C3 now, don't I? So I can do this, negative four-thirds uh, X2 cubed plus C3, which is 2016. Okay, there's that guy. I got one more left to do, and that is this guy right here, okay? Remember, we got boundary condition where uh, Y1 equals Y2. When X1 and X2 equals 6, so let's set that up. So I get this, minus 4 times 6 to the 4th divided by 12 plus C3, which is 2016, times X2, which is 6, plus C4 is equal to, down here is my Y2, okay? 8 times 6, oh, that's cubed, isn't it? Okay, minus 216 times 6 squared. Let's solve for C4 and see what we get this time. So 2016 times 6 equals 
minus uh, 4 times 6 to the 4th uh, divided by 12 equals 11,664. We'll move that to the other side. So minus 11,664, right? So how about negative answer plus 8 times 6 cubed, okay? And then minus 216 times 6 squared is negative 17,712. So C4 equals negative 17,712, okay? Bada bing, bada boom, let's put it in here and let's fill this guy out and then we're going to be done with this, aren't we? So Y2 EI is equal to 4 divided by 12, is that the same as 1 over 3? So X2 to the 4th over 3, oh, but that's negative, isn't it? Okay, plus C3, which was 2016, 2016 times x2, okay, and then plus c4, and c4 is actually a negative, isn't it? So I'm going to go minus 17712, okay, and there it is, okay? So there's my slope and deflection from section 1 from here to here. There's my slope and deflection equations from here to here. Now remember, x1 is different than x2, because we built these equations with the assumption that x was going to come from this side for x2, okay? So if you're going to use something in that equation to get an answer, you need to make sure that your number is referenced from this side, okay? As positive from that side. So just important to understand where your, where your equations were derived from when it comes time to using them, okay? Okay, I hope that this wasn't super confusing. If you'll follow these steps and be very systematic about this, follow this recipe here, bada, 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 right on down the line, then you'll get these knocked out no problem at all, okay? These are pretty tough. What's tough about this? The integrating, not tough. Finding the uh, boundary conditions can be a little confusing. And then, of course, there's a lot of algebra, a lot of places to make a mistake. I hope this helps. I'll see you on the next video.